Maddie Fresh on the track of his state. And I'm bringing to you live my boys Alec and Nate, Tequila Ty, Jay Nelly, and Zillin in the building. So kick it back, pour the drink. We chillin' because I'm boozing and bettin' and ballin' like I'm two six in the blue kicks. Watch me move quick. Yeah, it's the blueprint. So who's getting involved? Welcome in to the show. This is Booze Bets and Ball, baby. And welcome back. I know, I just want to dance along and like not actually talk. But welcome back to another episode of Booze Bets and Ball. We're uh, doing something a little different today because there is zero college football, anything. And Jay Nelly isn't here to talk college basketball. And he's apparently the only one of us that is an expert on that. So the rest of us aren't allowed to I'll talk about it. it. Yeah, so we're just going to leave it at that. Um, but there is one football game left to be played and that is the super bowl so we have not done really anything nfl all year i think i, I maybe like nelly had a better two on the nfl but we have not done like any nfl stuff so we're gonna give a super bowl preview a try uh nate didn't want to come he says he knows absolutely nothing about the nfl nelly i don't know what he was doing but he gave us a prediction so we're gonna get to that a little later so we're gonna dive into some stuff that we're gonna look at yeah, we got some stats to look at, stuff like that. We'll give some predictions. Uh, this is pretty quick, honestly, but I thought we'd give it a try. All right, so we have <clears throat> the two one seeds meeting the Super Bowl. That actually does not happen as often as you think it would. Uh, first time, I think, in at least three years, I think, that this has happened. So both 14-3, and three, obviously, with the NFL going to a 17-game schedule starting last year. The line currently favors the Eagles by one and a half points, but the ESPN matchup predictor gives the Chiefs almost a 52% chance to win. This was 50-50, I think, right when the game was set, so that, that has moved a little bit. I don't know why, what, what has happened since then to make it move, but that's where we're at right now. Uh, any thoughts on the line or anything? Well, first, I just want to say this is only the 14th time it's ever been a number one versus number one since seeding yeah. started in 75. So there's a little analytics since Nate's not here. <laughs> um, what was the question again? I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, thoughts on the line? Thoughts on the matchup predictor? Anything there? Uh, I mean, I don't follow betting that much, so you correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it keeps flipping back and forth. So it kind of opened with the Eagles, and then it jumped to the Chiefs quick, and now it's back on the Eagles. Um, uh yeah, kind of. I, I think the Chiefs opened and then it went to like two and a half Eagles and now it's down to a point and a half. So, okay. So, I mean, it just kind of shows you that like nothing's really set right now. They know it's going to be a close game. They know it's probably the two best teams all season, um, minus the 49ers. But of course, they don't really have a quarterback. So, it's really kind of like the two teams everyone like expected to be here, especially after that injury happened for the Niners. Um, they've I don't, they played well. Uh, both are really good teams, well-rounded teams. There's not glaring holes in any team, I would say. Um, so I think the line just kind of indicates how close the whole Vegas and even the NFL and anyone that watches what they're thinking for it. Yeah, I mean, this is pretty much as close of a line as you can get, I, I would say, outside of a point. And I don't know if they're going to give a point in the Super Bowl. So, yeah, this is pretty much as tight as it can get. Um you know, both these teams made it to the Super Bowl as one seeds. Kind of different routes to get there, I guess, so to say. Uh, the, the Eagles ran over the the Giants, thirty-eight to seven. Then I I don't want to say ran over, just kind of buried, injured, destroyed the 49ers, thirty-one to seven. I mean, that that was over pretty quick. Chiefs, on the other hand, some closer games beat the Jags, twenty-seven twenty. And then in the AFC Championship against Joe Burrow and the Bengals, 23-20, and like not an instant classic, but a really good game. So one team kind of you know gone through the ringer the past two games to get here. The other one on cruise control. So I'm a little interested to see how that plays out with you know the Eagles with having the bye week as the one seed haven't been tested in a little bit of time. Yeah, I agree. Um... I mean, right now it kind of seems like the Chiefs are going through that time where people are getting hurt. Uh, they're kind yeah. of up. Having that body flow this world is definitely going to help them. But if you look at the Eagles, they kind of had that the last couple of weeks of the season. So mm -hmm. there's just 
their luck. So it's it's kind of the way the sport goes when injuries happen because you know they're going to happen. It's just one. Uh, they had theirs a little earlier in the season, so they've had more time to get healthy for this point. Um, so it's just I mean, it's just based on who they played. Uh, 49ers, they beat the hell out of them at the start of the game. And when you don't have a quarterback, it's hard to win a football game. So <laughs> yeah. when you knock the Eagles, they played the number two seed. They played a division rival and someone that beat the number three seed in the six seed Giants. Um, and it's not their fault that they kicked their ass. They played their best games, and that's here they are in the Super Bowl now. Yep. That is true. So moving on, we got some of the, I guess not key stats, just the normal stats here. So Kansas City, slightly better offense. Philadelphia, slightly better defense, which is pretty much what I expected. Uh, A lot of points expected to be scored in this game. You got two offenses that, you know, get close to 30 a game, which is pretty impressive in the NFL, both over 400 yards a game. Defenses. I was the one thing I was surprised by. I I think that I didn't think the Chiefs' defense was that good. Actually, uh, only you know only a point and a half behind where the Eagles are, and the Eagles are looked at as you know the, maybe the second or third best defense in the NFL. So I I was a little surprised by how good or I not how good but better the Chiefs' uh, defense was than I expected them to be. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, age old saying is the best offense or best defense is keeping the other offense off the field. So, yeah. how electric their offense is and the ability to sustain drives and drive down the fields, whether it's 80 yards, 90 yards, um, eat that clock away. Uh, I think that's really benefits their defense. So, they're not on the field for as long of times and they're able to make those opportunistic plays and get uh, key takeaways and limit um, time of possession and points allowed. So uh, their offense certainly helps their defense. Mm-hmm. Same with defense helps their offense if they're struggling, or their offense helps their defense too, because don't get it wrong, Philly has an awesome offense as well. Yeah, two two totally different offenses too. You know, with Mahomes, the Chiefs are going to throw the ball a ton of times. I, I know Jalen Hurts missed a couple games, but Mahomes threw 200 more passes than uh, Jalen Hurts this year, so – Clearly, one team likes to fling it out a little more. The other team, ground and pound, has a really good offensive line, which we'll get to. Has three running backs they trust, plus a running quarterback. So they they come at you in a lot of different ways, whereas the Chiefs have the best tight end in the league, and then they have a collection of like eight receivers. None of them are number one, but none of them are terrible either. It's it's kind of a funny collection they have there, so... It, it is interesting to see the uh, two differences in the offenses come together here. Absolutely. And I know everyone said it, whether it's ESPN, Fox, CBS, any sports network will say it. Everyone thought the Chiefs offense was going to step back when they lost Tyreek Hill, but it really just shows you how great Mahomes is with the ability to distribute the ball throughout the whole offense. Get so many different guys um, involved that the defense still has to cover the whole field. And when you have the best tight end in football right now, and Travis Kelsey and arguably a top three of all time. Yeah. It, just, it helps for sure. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of interesting matchups there, but really the big key matchup is this, uh, the Eagles defensive line, the chiefs offensive line Eagles first in sacks this year with 70. And I think counting the playoffs, it's like 77 or something like that. Chiefs offensive line this year, 26 sacks allowed, which was third best in football. Now that I guess is in part to the fact that Patrick Mahomes is really good on the move and he's been banged up the past couple of weeks, uh, suffered that ankle injury against the Jaguars. So, you know, the two weeks off I think are big because he was maybe 70, 75% in that AFC championship game, but if he gets closer to 90, 95, and he could move, that that is going to hurt the Eagles' advantage with that pass rush because he is going to work himself out of some situations that an injured Brock Purdy or a Daniel Jones just cannot do. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is the key matchup in the game, as you have highlighted here. Yeah. Um, the, the main part is they got to have someone spying Mahomes throughout this. They don't want him escaping the pocket and – uh, putting the defense in a bind where one guy has to come up and leave a receiver or Mahomes can scramble for 10, 15 yards every play. Um, seeing where that ankle is in that first, like, five, ten minutes of the game is really going to determine what uh, how the Eagles attack the rest of the game, I would say. Um, 
-hmm. If they don't have to worry that much about the scramble, then they can really key in on getting that pressure and try to rush his throws or force him to throw from the pocket off one foot because that's when balls sail or they skip. Um, and that's what leads to turnovers most of the time. So you really want to see where he's at health wise from the start of the game. And then the Eagles will adjust from there. Um, but I think they're going to have kind of two game plans ready to go, whether it's how mobile he is, if he's very mobile or limited. Um, and after that first couple series, deciding how they want to attack the rest of the game. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're going to have to make, there were some points against the Bengals where he was not getting out of stuff that normally he would have, it looks like. And, the Chiefs didn't really game plan for that, it seemed like. They, they kind of left the offensive line alone, didn't bring in any extra blockers. So I'm interested to see if they change that. Obviously, kind of the downside when your tight end is your number one pass catcher is you can't keep him in a block in, in a sense that that hurts the Chiefs. So I'm interested Absolutely. to see how that goes. Yeah, and I mean – when you have Andy Reid as your play caller, it's, you're going to find ways to get uh, ideal matchups, whether it's with the tight end receivers or running backs. Um, I'm not too worried about the Chiefs' ability to get the ball out. It's just how to manage it depending on where Mahomes' health is at. Yeah, for sure. So that's all I got for slides. But I did want to bring up two things that I should have brought up in the open. But there are a lot of interesting storylines in this Super Bowl. Andy Reid obviously coached the Eagles. I think did they go to two Super Bowls. I know they went to at least one. Went to at least one Super Bowl with Andy Reid as the head coach, but did not win. And now Reid will coach against the Eagles in the Super Bowl with the Chiefs. And it's the first time brothers are playing in the Super Bowl against each other. We just mentioned Travis Kelsey's brother is the center for the Eagles. Uh, why did his first name just slip my not mind? Like Jason. <laughs> I, I had it queued up and it just slipped my mind. Yeah, Jason Kelsey. I knew what it was. Yeah. So that is a that's a cool storyline. So yeah, two two things to keep an eye on there. Um NFL script writers, I guess, did pretty good with those storylines. They're pretty big ones, I would say. So that 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 is some fun things to look at during the game. Absolutely. I mean, the whole script stuff that's going on with the NFL now, whether it's really <laughs> novels. It just it's weird how it's happened the last month where this started getting a lot of attention and then uh -huh. Bengals and Chiefs uh, championship game happened where there was definitely a couple questionable yeah. calls. It's just it's funny how this is all coming into play right now and just the way it's taken the world. Yeah, it is it is pretty funny. So we're gonna get to some predictions here. Uh just gonna preface it. None of us like either of these teams. So it's pretty much down the line. We're just gonna give you what we think. There's nothing really behind it in any sense. I'm gonna start with Nelly who couldn't be here but wanted to give some input. So is the Eagles 38 35 in a high scoring game. And for a little parlay he has Devontae Smith and Jerk McKinnon anytime touchdown scores. I wouldn't listen to that. <laughs> <laughs> Neither would I. So <laughs> he won't. He won't listen this far. I knew it. If he does listen to it, so it's okay. We can exactly. Say that. He'll never know. We said this. <laughs> yeah, he he won't know. So uh, I'm gonna let you make your pick now. I'm gonna go Eagles 32-27. Um, okay. I just part of me wants the Eagles to win, just because I love seeing Philly when they have successful. <laughs> that is true. Teams. I kind of just want to see the world burn, and I love how uh, passionate the Philly fan base is for their sports teams. But at the same time, I think they're really more balanced. And if I know we keep talking about Mahomes being injured, but Hurst has kind of been injured still since mm -hmm. late. In the season. Like this time off and those kind of blowout wins has helped him get back to full strength, and you're going to see him back to playing like the MVP player he was early in the season. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to take the Eagles 32-27. Yeah, honestly, like even, even that 49ers game – Hertz looked a little banged up. He missed some throws that he wasn't missing early in the year. So the two weeks off definitely helped him too. Well, everyone's picking the Eagles. And even though I'm going to be in Philly on Sunday, and, and I would I love the riot, love the scene, love everything about it. To me, there's just something. It's like the Eagles roster is insane. Like I, I think it's the most complete roster in the league. But it's like if Mahomes is the dude – it's like, is he going to lose another Super Bowl? You know, he lost the one to Tom Brady last time, a couple of years back when he was in it. Do, do I really see him losing another Super Bowl? Is kind of, you know, 
ro- complete rosters get you through a regular season, and that clearly got the Eagles through this season and to this point up to the Super Bowl. But, you know, the Super Bowls are a little different, and the Chiefs have the experienced quarterback. They have the experienced head coach, and those little things just, I think, you know, they're – they go their way and in the Super Bowl, those kind of things are magnified when maybe they're not in an October game. So that's me agree. leading that's me leaning the Chiefs like 31-28. I think this is a one possession game. I can see it coming down to a last second field goal, something like that. But to me, it's kind of like when you know when shit starts flying, who would I rather have in the do or die situation? I'm gonna pick Mahomes. And in a Super Bowl, I'm, I'm gonna lean that way. Absolutely. I mean, shit. Mahomes is the best player in the league. So if you have one game for the fate of your life or the fate of the universe, why not take the best player? So I see where you're yeah. coming from. <clears throat> yeah. I, I mean, I'm not going to be surprised if the Eagles win at all, but I do think that some of those things stand out a little more in a Super Bowl versus a regular season game. And absolutely. I'm going to, I'm going to lean that way. We so got that's the all we believe. Yeah, go ahead. Oh. Yeah. We have the two best teams in the league playing, so it's going to be a great game either way. Um, we'll just hopefully everyone can enjoy it. Yeah, it, it should be fun. The college football national title. That's all we yeah. can hope for. <laughs> yeah, that, that is all we hope for. But uh, yeah, so wanted to give this a try. Hopefully, we'll see how our predictions uh, come out. I'll come back and listen to them if I forget. But I, I think I got everyone's <laughs> down. So yeah, that's going to be it for this. Uh, Super Bowl is when this come. Well, I'll decide on Thursday. So three days. So. Uh, You have three days to watch this and see if we're right or wrong. (laughs) All right, we'll see you next time.